Okay, I'm fucking sick of this door. Power of the elves! Fist of stone! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I forgot how we do this. I know you make a roll. Let me look at your spell list again. <clears throat> Last hand. Uh, okay. You do that. Uh, you cast a spell. Um, after about a second or two, you finish the spell. Your hand turns... Which hand? Left or right? Right. You, okay, your right hand turns to stone. Um, and do, do you strike the door? I strike the shit out of it. Uh, give me a d20 roll. Oh. <clears throat> you, uh... You go to strike the door, and the weight of the, the stone hand that you now possess is a little bit too heavy for you, uh, since you are a very weak character, and it throws you off balance. So as you go to punch, you notice that while it's already in full motion and you can't do much to stop it, you are punching the wall next to the door, and um, you do get a solid punch off. It goes uh, probably about, um, I don't know half a foot or so inside of the wall, stone meeting stone, um, but you do make a pretty big dent in the wall next to the door. Sick. The rest of you see this happen. Uh, it's very extravagant. It's very sudden. Um, yeah, and that happens. Yeah, it jumps to my feet. <laughs> okay. Why don't we just up... break the wall instead of the door, guys? <laughs> The, the wall doesn't seem to be enchanted. That's what I was going for anyways. <laughs> I'm going to pick up a spoon and like tap the hole in the wall and then tap the wall just to find out like how much deeper there is to go. If we can actually break out through the wall. Do you tap the dent that was made or the yeah. actual wall? Yeah. Uh, you, tap a, you tap the dent um, and it just sounds like metal hitting stone. You can't so get can't a sense get of... get any reading. No, you can't. Well... Give me a percept. Actually, no, you would have no idea. You couldn't even do a perception check for that. It Did just I sounds see like. Did how thick the door was when it opened? <clears throat> um, if you would have asked me when it opened, you probably could have, but not now. You do not remember. You did not try to collect that information when it happened. So. Okay. As that uh, as that happens, it, it's very loud. It makes a lot of noise. And uh, Ryan, are you still listening to the wall? Depends on if an hour had passed or not, I guess. Well, the, the, well, if she started smashing the door, I'd probably stop. Yeah, yeah I mean, if, if he smashes the door, or sorry, the, the wall next to it, do you stop, or do you just yeah, kind of notice would, that? And... I, I would kind of back up. Okay. Because it would ruin the sound vibrations anyway, so. Um, do you tell me that? Because I'd be offended. No. <laughs> okay very loud uh, to get back like on the course of events. You see Ricardo slam his hand into the wall. Riley goes and grabs a spoon and hits the, the side of the wall with it and everyone's kind of stumbled as to what the fuck she's actually doing. Uh, um, Kalpot, you take your head off as well as the glass. Rich, what do you do in the, the course of all this? Um, I don't even know what to do anymore. I'm exhausted. I go back to the table and sit down in a chair. Okay. I just watch the door. <clears throat> um, after about five minutes or so, um, you hear on the opposite end, the door um, is once again saying yes, 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 and... I, I get out my sword and go back to the door again. Yeah, about... Uh, you hear yeah, three yeses. Again, too. And as, uh, as the third yes is said, the door uh, swings open um, not fast, but it, it does open. And uh, in walks um, what looks to be... Rich, you can make an action at any point. In walks a... <laughs> not yet. Not yet. A, uh, a creature. He is simply wearing uh, tattered clothes from what you guys can see. And I need everyone to make a perception check. And then I, I need everyone to save versus spell. Jesus. Perception check. What's my perception? It is 14, good sir. Thank you. 27. Can I do something before 27. I have to save? And, uh, oh, damn it. Our d20. 
31, I win. Spell. Wait, did you guys just roll like four or five times in a row? What the fuck? D20 plus 10. Cat, stop rolling. Oh, that's oh, it's right. You guys did your D20s. Um, you didn't roll a D20 on your 20. You just rolled 20. And that's I know. I rolled 10. an 8 below that. Oh, okay. Uh, Caitlin, for your uh, perception check, if you you said you wanted to do what? Make an action? Yeah. You can substitute an action for your perception check if you wish to do so. Oh, okay. Ignore that roll. Um, so is he standing in front of me, or is she standing in front of me, or like above me? I'm on the ground, like right from the door. <clears throat> uh, I mean, if you if you're like two or three feet away from the door, the figure walks in and he is at your feet. Like if you're laying down, your feet are closest to him. No, I'm laying down with my head facing the door. Okay, sure. Your your head is okay. closest to his feet, but. Before, actually, no, make your action. Okay, I'm gonna like push myself back through his legs and then jump up behind him and put. I need you to make a dexterity check to see if you sure. can actually do this. <laughs> D20 plus 15. The fuck? Okay, now I need to go and look at everything real quick. So, cats, your saver spell. I didn't do my saver spell. My save for failed. Spells failed. Mine failed. <laughs> but my perception, my perception check was sick. I'm just gonna write this all out. <laughs> failed. Uh, Ryan, did you fail your saver spell? I did. Uh, Riley, did you save your or save or spell? You said I could do an action. Instead. You can do an action for your perception check. You still need a save or spell. Yeah, I failed that miserably. Okay. And uh, Rich. Fail. Okay, now the perception checks, 27, 27, 31, and Caitlin did not do the perception check and opted to be dexterous. You, per you guys perceive two things. One, you notice that Caitlin is attempting to do some dexterous action, and she gets to her feet, tries to jump through this guy's legs, or sorry, this, this thing's legs, and um, upon doing this, you aren't very nimble when you do it, so you misjudge how much you actually need to, like, at what angle you need to make the jump through his legs. So at least head bash him in the crotch. That that's what happens. But as you do this, you pass through it, and sand comes out on the opposite side. And this is what you all see: that there is. This explosion of sand behind this figure. Well, and then you all fall asleep. Okay. As you're asleep, uh, you don't dream anything. You don't really notice anything. And the next thing you notice, you are in a dark room. And in this dark room, you, you are not sure how you uh, got here. There is a table in this room. And I need to open this real quick to make sure I get this description correct. Um, you're in a, it, it's a pretty large room, and um, there is like a half crescent table on the opposite end. And this half crescent table is the only light source in this room. It is glowing. It is not bright enough to blind you, but it's bright enough to light the room, basically, at a very um, low level of light. And behind this table... You guys see nine figures. And the nine figures, while you guys have a hard time kind of looking at every single one of them and getting a full description, as you're kind of just looking around, you guys can make an action right now if you do wish before they start talking. Who are you? Those, uh, all of the voices kind of uh, stop murmuring to themselves and you see one of the figures stand up and this figure um, not too too tall uh, stands up and you notice that he's got a very uh, extravagant headpiece on it, it looks to be uh, you guys would know it as he just wrapped some cloth around it but it's actually a turban um, on his head and he stands up and he goes, we are the Council of Nine and you are in our court. My name is Strago. 
I'm the leader of this council. And he looks at the other nine and he goes, and these are the, the, or the other eight. He goes, and these are the council. Do we recognize any of them? The only one that you recognize is the male human wizard, uh, who is a little bit overweight on the, uh, towards the right side of the table, and he is the wizard that uh, had his staff at Rich's uh, throat the day prior. Does is one of them bundled up in clothes and difficult to discern their gender? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's but a little bit metagamey, that... but <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I look at the guy who stood up and I cast a personal reading on him. Um Now before we do this, is there some type like as a wizard, I don't want to I don't want to just fucking DM hacks this and say you can't do that. Uh Neil is as a wizard, can he stop this or he like can't stop a spell from being cast unless he strikes the caster. Right, so he would just have to save then, right? Yeah. Okay, one sec. Uh, that's cool. I seem to have lost my dice. How do you do a DM roll on D20? Uh, slash GM roll, I think? GM roll. I don't really know. I might want to test it first. That's right. Uh, okay. Let's see here. We go to Ryan's spell list. Or slash GR will work as well. Gotcha. What the fuck is personal reading? Why isn't personal reading in this list? Did you edit this list or something, Neil? Hold on. I'll, I'll link no. you. There you go. It's uh, bottom left corner. Bottom left corner. Oh, yeah. there. I, I guess I was skipping past it, too. Um, okay, hold on. Oh, this is so nice. I want a page like this. What? You don't get spells, though. Yeah, but maybe. I could have one for, like, all the horses I own. It would oh, just be whis Whisper. Whisper. Can I get trophies for every time I beat someone at poker and have a trophy page? If you take their head or something for a trophy, sure. Um, okay. Uh, Kalapot, you start to cast a spell. And um, just to explain why what happens happens, the name that you heard this person tell you is Strago. Right. As the spell goes on, you focus on that name, focus on that person, and uh, it just kind of fizzles out. You do not get any inf any information. Um, the wizards see this, and they all start laughing at you. And uh, How do they laugh? It's a very hearty laugh. It's not as evil as the one that I usually do. <laughs> it's just a, a boisterous laugh, uh, more comical than anything, less evil. And... Um, Strago responds to Cobblepot, and he goes, You think I would give you my real name? Apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, do you guys make any other actions other, apart from that? Rich, you said, uh, who are you? Cobblepot, you cast a yeah. spell. Ricardo Riley, do you guys want to make an action? No, nah, I'll just kind of look around. Not really make eye contact with any of them. Ricardo? Yeah, Same thing? Yeah. Okay. So uh, he says that, and he goes, Strago responds, and he goes, now, where were we? And um, he sits down, and at the end of the table, there is a, uh, looks to be a child, a female child, but uh, she seems very, she speaks very eloquently and, and very unlike a child would. She stands up and says that uh, her name is Realm, and she sits down. Another one stands up. This is the male human wizard, the one that you guys known to be the one that spoke to you uh, with the pink boots and the staff. Uh, he's a little bit overweight. He stands up and he goes, my name is Foon Baba, and I spoke to you yesterday. He sits down. Another uh, wizard stands up, and uh, it's a female human wizard. Um, seems to be wearing a very eloquent dress. 
Um, looks to be a little bit older than the one that already stood up. And he goes, uh, my name is, R or, or she goes, my name is, uh, is it pronounced? I think it's Rydia. Rydia? We'll go with Rydia. Uh, she says, my name is Rydia. He, she sits down. Rydia? Rydia. Do we recognize her voice? What? No. Uh, she sits down. Neil, the one that for some reason you knew to be somewhat, uh... But Rydia's... Rydia? Every... Every one of JP's campaigns are actually the Final Fantasy edition. He just yeah. doesn't want to get sued for copyright. Exactly. So he just, like, makes up other but names. Those, but Rydia's FF4. Everyone's FF... I'm confused. You're, you're breaking the... the just let it happen, man. Just let it happen. I, I'm, uh, I'm so confused. This, this uh, other humanoid figure stands up, and it just looks like a fucking lump of hair. Like, he just has hair everywhere from his head that connects down to his sideburns that goes all the way down to the bottom of his beard. Uh, he stands up. He seems to be very old, and uh, he says, my name is Tella. And he looks at Rich when he says that. He sits down. Uh, two wizards stands up. They are gnomes this time around. One male, one female. Uh, they stand up, and in a very high-pitched voice, one goes, my name is Pollum, and the other one goes, my name is Porum. <laughs> and you notice that uh, they are gnomes, and they have a hard time seeing over the table, but uh, they do get it down. The other one, uh, you guys saw what looks to just be a chair, but um, as those two sit down, uh, you see this uh, kind of ethereal figure stand up in a chair. Um, and you don't notice it at first, but you're kind of looking around for another introduction because uh, you notice that there have only been um, seven introduced. And this one stands I'm not, up. I really don't care. This one stands up. Uh, and says, um, he, doesn't, he doesn't say this. It really just kind of fills your head. It speaks inside of your mind. You don't hear this audibly. And he says, uh, my name is Vivi. He sits down. And then uh, the last figure on the table stands up. And uh, this is a, um, an elf. And um, while it is very dimly lit in this uh, this room. Ricardo, you immediately think that she is brown-skinned, this female wizard. She stands up and says that her name is Lulu, and she's wearing very uh, dark clothing. It's kind of feathered at the top, um, cutting off at the mid-shoulder. She sits down. And Strago stands back up and says... Um, you know us. Now let us hear who you are. Are we standing at this point? Yeah. I mean, there's no okay. chairs or anything for you to sit down. Okay. Well, we just kind of like came to consciousness in this area. So. Yes. All right. Um, I am Rich. And these are my companions. And I introduce each one of them. Not me. I stop him. <laughs> okay. You get interrupted halfway through. I say, my name, my lords, is... <laughs> Ricardo del Mar the first, son of Jose Antonio del Mar the third, Lord of La, Lord of La Alameda del Fuego y de las Sombras of the Great World of Ebon, the last brown elf. <laughs> He's a little dramatic. They don't respond when he says this. Cobblepot and Riley, do you guys uh, introduce yourself? I start yourself? Tasia clapping. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you guys introduce yourself, Cobblepot and Riley? No. I don't. Not, neither of you do? Okay. Ricardo's uh, intro is very extravagant. Uh, you guys are all focusing on it or trying not to uh, because you've heard it so many fucking times and know kind of what is what the spiel is. And yeah, Riley's still amused by it. Well, I added the great, the great world of Babam. They must be somewhat. Right, right. right. No, I'm getting to that. Um, yeah. That all said and... You look at the table, and they're all not moving anymore. They seem to be frozen. And a voice out of nowhere, you do not see another figure. Um, you just hear this voice come out, and it sounds very deep. It sounds like he's trying to be very dramatic. And the voice says, I begin and have no end. Eventually, I will be the ending of all that has begun. What am I? God. In some cultures, I would be called that. Guess again. 
I begin and have no end. What was the rest? Uh, eventually, I will be the ending of all that has begun. Time. Goes another good guess. Rich Cobblepot. Esports, because it's forever. <laughs> Rich, also ignore the fact that your character is very stupid. You can make an educated guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rich just kind of stares blankly. Cobblepot, any, any guesses? I don't have any guesses. He goes, ah, you guys never were very smart. The answer is death. That is who I am. And out steps the stranger I that you guys... I pull out my sword immediately. You pull out your sword immediately. Out from kind of the shadows, you notice that uh, the stranger who was in your room uh, two nights prior and that you guys have met uh, prior to stopping time around Lava steps out. And um, yeah, he says that his name is Death and it is no longer the stranger. And he walks out. You guys draw your weapons. Is that what you're doing, Rich? Oh, I'm drawing my weapons. Okay. What do the rest of you do? I'll put my hands like, on weapons, but I don't draw them yet. I'll just be like, okay, what are you doing here? Cobblepot? <laughs> so I'm, still just, I'm still just standing there, not, not making any action. He, uh, he snaps his fingers. Four of you are now outside of the town in front of the elevator. And uh, the stranger, or death, as we'll call him from now on, stands before you. And... Um, he, he kind of motions his hand, and as he outstretches his hand, you notice that it is quite frail and looks to be made of bone, and he points his hand towards the elevator, and he, he says, join me, will you? Wait, Are the people frozen? Like, for real? You don't know. You're not in that room anymore. You're outside the town. There's no people around you at all. Um, as you kind of, I, I guess you would glance around and see animals or whatnot. Uh, you look up at the sky, and you see a bird uh, frozen in time, what looks like, and it's just kind of somehow not moving in the middle of the air. Um, and you see uh, you see a couple of uh, like butterflies flying around and they are frozen in air as well. Uh, the leaves uh, on a tree are no longer affected by wind. They are frozen. And uh, okay. this, this guy's just standing there pointing you into this elevator. Why so you've been pretty cool to us, us Steph. You dreamt about this? <clears throat> So, Dev, you seem like a cool guy. You've helped us before. You stopped uh, Labos or whatever before. Then he became our homie. So, um, can we just stay here? We like this place. We were about to go to trial, fuck shit up. Do we have a choice in the matter? He, uh, he kind of smiles and he looks back at you and he goes, You seem to be a popular group today as... Another, uh, as you have been requested, and yet another audience, and this is the audience of the gods, and I will take you there if you simply step into this elevator. And he says elevator. I walk in. I slowly put my sword. This is the guy that appeared to me, and we had that one-on-one -on -one conversation, right? He's like your Correct. homie, yeah. Correct. I put my sword away and said, are you really death? As I kind of walk towards the elevator. He goes, um... I have many names. Some say death. Some say the Grim Reaper. Some say God. I keep my distance. I like. <laughs> some say a, God. Know, he looks at Cobblepot. Yeah, he goes. Uh, there's no need to to fear me. I only come when, when the time asks for it. Yeah. Not sooner, not later. You're here now. He goes. Well, you guys, it it'll be answered. Just the gods wish to speak to you, and and at this point in time, I am at their bidding. Okay. If I touch you, will I right? die? If you, if sorry, you say what, mm -hmm. Riley? Yeah. If I touch you, will I die? He goes, no, no. Uh, it it does not work quite like that. Okay, good to know. Okay, cool. I'll get in the elevator too, I guess. Riley, you getting in the elevator? Which floor are we going to? Do you get in the elevator? No, I'm just <laughs> talking to him. Uh, he goes um, to a special floor, one might say. Dude, Riley, you're holding us up. 
I look at uh, Death and I cast Detect Magic on his person. You all are sheep. You fucking. I mean, what what is the reading that? Let me see what the. Detect magic. I can like if he has magical properties there. Oh yeah, you you fucking detect magic like straight up. You you. Do, oh, you you detect overwhelming magic. Um. Hold on. GM. I gotta make a roll. Uh, that's all you detect. Cole, okay. Pop, you detect a lot of magic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what I casted. Oh, I don't. You don't no, say anything. You, you, when you cast shit. No. You don't understand what in, what spell has been cast, <laughs> uh, Ricardo. You do not have the understanding of that school of magic. Cobblepot, what did you just cast? <laughs> Dude, Cobblepot, it's fucking death. Stop casting spells at him. Yeah, please stop pop. casting spells at him. <laughs> I cast Wall of Fog at Death, like in his skull. Are you serious? You cast fog, Wall of Death? Or Wall, sorry, Wall of Fog at Death? Okay, wait, wait, wait. wait. No, you cast it. I mean, it's been casted, if that's what you just yeah, said. Yeah, he's got it in the animation. Wall of Fog. <laughs> <laughs> I, punch, I punch him. Fog comes out. Oh, my God. Well, actually, no. If you punch him immediately, you have a chance to interrupt. So give me a d20. Oh, you can see all my rolls. Whatever. As Neil goes for a punch, I'm going to try and trip him. You... Fuck! In your anger, you miss uh, and hit the side of the elevator, or the inside of the elevator. Nothing happens. Uh, wall of fog happens, and um, death kind of takes his hand and just collects it all and starts, like, spinning it. And then you see his finger basically point out, and all of the fog is, is kind of collected. And he's just kind of like... Ricardo, would you fucking stop casting that spell wherever you go? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And he goes, Riley, please, let us, yeah. let us make our way. I'll go with you if you go and get my horse and transport it to me alive. Totally fine. Mm. Then I'll go. He looks at you and, and, and goes, Argo has oh Argo has been... And, or, sorry, he's been out of harm's way um, back in Narsh. Um, okay. I can go and collect them for you, however it will have to be done as uh, I leave you guys um, in the Temple of the Gods. It's but fucking we... death! Just get in the goddamn <laughs> elevator! Bring it, look, will you bring it to the temple? I go like this to Rich. He, he, he goes, you know... For, a, for for an average person, you seem to be not afraid of me. I, I will do this for you, but I'm very impressed <laughs> that you're able to uh, stand so collected in, in front of uh, someone like myself, who many simply just begin weeping. And he goes, Look, I will collect I'm your horse. I'm tired right now. <laughs> Don't give me that. <laughs> I'll just get in the elevator. Okay. You guys oh, walk. Her, she gets in. You're going to get us killed one of these days. Jesus Christ. It's <laughs> fucking death. Santa and Yasha, are they fine too? Can you bring them too? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those are the other two horses. Like, who the fuck is Sanj and Yasha? <laughs> those are those are cobble pots in your horse, correct? Uh -huh. um, Did you even say brandy sock? You left brandy sock out. <laughs> he, Thanks, buddy. he he goes up to the door and you can wake me up. You see, uh, it's Riley's job. <laughs> you see, as he puts his hand on the door, um. It, it reacts to him, and uh, there is a special uh, a button that just says that appears um, kind of next to all the other one through five, above five, and it just says T. And he hits the button, and the door closes, um, and it starts to go up. And he goes, "I'll collect the horses and have them for you. However, they will not fit in this elevator, so bringing them to the temple does no good. But if that is what you wish, then I will make it make it so." Uh, well, one of them. No, fit I'm in the elevator? Then. Just, just. Leave them at the stable or whatever up there. We're not gonna fit. I think I think mine, just mine, one will fit, so that's fine. I think. <laughs> okay. Just bring Argo. Okay, you're demanding that Argo be brought. Uh, are, do I'm the cool other of you that. care okay about your horses being brought, Rich and Cobblepot? Uh, I'm not demanding it. 
I make no demands of death whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you actually... Uh, well, I, I won't tell you how RP. Never mind. Never mind. Um, okay, so you guys are... Uh, you feel lighter as it goes up. Is that is that accurate? Team physics. So going down. When it, when it goes up, heavier. You feel heavier. Heavier, heavier. Correct. You guys feel heavier down. as it starts to uh, ascend. And uh, once again, there are no windows in this. And after some time, um, Death starts kind of humming to himself as to fill the the elevator with some sort of music. <laughs> it is not a song that any of you uh, recognize or anything like that. It's just audible noise from what you can tell. Although it is quite, uh, quite well hummed. I'm imagining girls. Can you hum Kima. it? Um, I'm trying to think how this would sound. I'll try to compliment whatever Death is humming. So if you could. <laughs> yeah, he he's just kind of like. As he starts. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that totally starts happening. He just keeps humming along and kind of turns his head back to you and nods and keep humming. Anyways, this happens for about uh, a minute or two as the uh, elevator ascends and uh, you hear kind of a, a ringing noise and uh, death turns to you and he goes, Now, Riley, and I say this to all of you, especially you, and he points to uh, Ricardo, just mind your manners. No wall of fogs. Keep your hands to yourself at all times. Do not piss these people off because they can simply erase you from existence. And um, I give Riley a look, like a a smile. Okay. <laughs> uh, Death walks out of the the room, and as you guys start to uh, leave the the room. Um, you notice you are in a incredibly extravagant. You've never seen anything like this when it comes to the marble in this room. It is um, it is incredibly uh, impressive as is large. Um, in terms of scale, you guys stand, of course, six feet and, and whatnot. And this is gigantic. These are giant fucking pillars uh, that that are on the outside of this temple. Um, I'm trying to think of anything in that you have seen so far would compare to this. The, the tower, tower is the tower that you saw in the town of Mobley's is probably um, uh, taller than all of this, but it is definitely in the same size comparison. Like it is just this massive, massive, massive temple, and um, you are all outside of it. Around you is nothing but clouds, um, apart from this temple that is in front of you. And the elevator is um, on top of this this marble now that is kind of elegantly cut. There are um, different symbologies and whatnot. Cobblepot, you would immediately recognize that these are just the symbols of the gods. Uh, you mm -hmm. recognize Mechanics, uh, Mechanus' insignia right off the bat, as well as all the other ones that, that you have known to uh, come to know in your studies. And... Uh, Death kind of gets back in the elevator and he goes, I will go collect Argo. And the elevator shuts. And you guys are standing in this outside area. Uh, it's not windy or anything like that. It, you can actually see the sun. Uh, it's off in the distance. There are clouds all around you and a temple in front of you. And we'll end the first hour there. We'll come back uh, in hour two. We'll, we'll go for three hours today. I think that's just going to become the the standard for this show simply because four hours for me is very hard to plan when it comes to a DM. And then I just start making stupid shit up and we end up just doing really bad things. So Thinking I don't need more names from Final Fantasy. Yeah. I just have to start like opening up the name generator from Final Fantasy and it just gets, <laughs> it gets really bad. Uh, so we'll take our first break here, guys. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll be back with our number two right after this of Roleplay Ebb and see you guys then. Bye-bye.